Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. Before we get into today's show, I, I want to tell you about a new offering we have here at Book of the Day. We have now launched the Book of the Day Plus, which is a new way to support our work here at NPR. When you sign up, you get access to a special feed where you can listen to our new episodes sponsor-free. Nothing is changing about our regular show, but Book of the Day Plus is another way to help us keep giving you the books coverage you love. So please do sign up. We really appreciate it. You can find out more at plus.npr.org slash book of the day. All right, on to today's show. Communicating across language barriers is a difficult thing. But when it happens, when two people who don't speak the same language can really reach a point of communication, that's a beautiful thing. In Karis Davies' novel, Clear, an 1800 Scottish reverend heads to a remote island and encounters the last man who speaks Norn, a real-life extinct language that Davies came across in a library one night. About halfway through this interview with NPR Scott Simon, Davies reads an excerpt that's part English and part Norn, and it's fascinating how I almost feel like I get what she's saying, even if I don't understand most of it. That's after the break. This message comes from NPR sponsor Hulu, presenting Diane von Furstenberg, Woman in Charge, which tells the inspiring story of the iconic trailblazer known by her initials DVF. Child of a Holocaust survivor, princess by marriage, founder of a fashion brand and philanthropist, Diane von Furstenberg continues to inspire and empower women around the globe. Featuring interviews with Oprah Winfrey, Mark Jacobs, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and more, Diane von Furstenberg, Woman in Charge, is now streaming on Hulu. The Reverend John Ferguson has broken away from the Church of Scotland to help found a new faith in 1843, but he needs to keep body and soul together for himself and his wife, Mary Ferguson. So he agrees to take on what we'd now call a gig, to sail to a small island to tell its lone inhabitant that he's being evicted. But John Ferguson arrives and falls from a high cliff. He's found by Ivar, who's been living a solitary life alongside his animals with no human contact in any way, as he helps bring the Reverend Ferguson, the man who was going to evict him, back to life. The two men begin to know one another and develop their own distinct language. Clear is the new novel from Karis Davies, the Welsh-born novelist who's recipient of the Royal Society of Literature's V.S. Pritchett Prize. And she now resides in Edinburgh. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks very much for having me. These two men are profoundly different, aren't they? They certainly are. One of them is an educated Presbyterian minister. And Ivor, as you say, has uh, been living alone on a remote island off the far northeast coast of Scotland. The remains of his family, his grandmother, his mother, and his uh, brother's widow um, left about 20 years ago for the new world. Um, they'd given up on life on the island, but Ivor just couldn't bring himself to go. He couldn't imagine any other kind of life. Tell us about this period called the clearances in the 1840s. I must say it was a revelation to me. So they we're in we're in the 1840s now. So these are the last brutally, most brutally coercive. Uh, years of the clearances, which have been going on since the middle of the previous century. Uh, Scottish landers, landowners began clearing their estates of poor, unprofitable tenants and replacing them with sheep. And this, uh, this sheep frontier, if you like, has been moving gradually further and further north as the landowners seek to make more money out of their estates than they can with with their poorer, smaller tenants. John Ferguson's wife, Mary Ferguson, has has doubts about her husband's mission, doesn't she? She does. She is the the thing you should know about John Ferguson is that as a Presbyterian minister, he is politically and socially very conservative. He respects the right of landowners to do as they will with their properties. Mary has a much more, I suppose, human and compassionate view, and she's very sceptical of the economists' view that these so-called improvements to the land are 
uh, are good for the people. How did John and, and Ivor begin to communicate? Very slowly. Uh, they begin by either pointing at things, wildly gesticulating, uh, and John writing down the names of objects, the names of animals, the name of names of colors. The, the words Ivor has in his language are so many and so specific for very slightly differentiated things like, you know, a cloud with a bit of light shining on the top is a different word from a cloud with a bit of light shining underneath. And over a period of um, of about a month, they begin to communicate in in a sort of pigeon way, but with, with, with a certain amount of depth here and there. I want to get you to... Um to read a section, if, if you could, please, that might give us some idea of uh, what begins to sound almost like a dialogue between the two people, mm -hmm. the two men who don't understand each other. Still heavily padded with English, the whole thing was an excited mixture of speech and gestures in which John Ferguson told him how he'd been down to the O to wash his socks, or that he'd stayed inside because it was groggy out, or that he'd filled the lamp from the bunkie and cleaned out the groot, that he'd had a quick flinter around, swept up the flogs of sniag and brought in the skerpin, or that he'd picked some snorri he'd found growing in the fore, scalded the flodrex and drained them and saved the flingersaw to make soup. And for a little while now had been sitting in the tour, going through everything he'd written down so far on the pages of his glossary. How did you develop that language? This whole novel began um, one winter's night about 12 years ago. I'd been working in the lovely old reading room in the National Library of Scotland in Edinburgh and came across a dictionary in an extinct language I'd never heard of before, Norn, which I discovered had once been spoken on the islands of Orkney and Shetland off the far north coast of Scotland. Um, for about a decade, I kept going back to these, this dictionary and reading it until a picture began to emerge of, of an island and a man who I realized was the last speaker of this vanishing language. What do you think Ivor and John begin to, uh, well, to see in one another? It's, it's mysterious. It's, I, I'm not sure I can give you logical reasons. It's, a, a bond that they that they form because they're alone. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always drawn to putting my characters in quite remote, desolate places, and it sounds a little harsh, perhaps, that I like to put them in these sorts of places. But I do think it means that the distractions of everyday life fall away in in these sorts of situations and you know as humans we're very good at not looking not confronting things that we don't want to confront Karis Davies her new novel Clear thank you so much for being with us thank you it was a pleasure Last year, over 20,000 people joined the Body Electric study to change their sedentary, screen-filled lives. And guess what? We saw amazing effects. Now you can try NPR's Body Electric Challenge yourself. Listen to updated and new episodes wherever you get your podcasts. This message comes from NPR sponsor Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. So Mint Mobile is offering premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. To get your new phone plan for just $15, go to mintmobile.com slash switch. This message comes from NPR sponsor Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. So Mint Mobile is offering premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. To get your new phone plan for just $15, go to mintmobile.com slash switch.